in the last video lecture we have seen the software based solution to the critical section problem that was using peterson solution in this video lecture we will see the hardware based solution to the critical section problem with the help of locks race conditions are prevented by requiring the critical regions to be protected by locks that is a process must acquire a lock before entering a critical section it releases the lock when it exits from the critical section so let us look at one example so in this example there will be multiple processes that will be willing to enter the critical section but a process will be allowed to enter only after acquiring the lock so even though there are multiple process p1 p2 p3 p4 there will be only one process that will be allowed at a time to acquire the lock so once the lock is acquired by the process for example if we consider the process p1 acquires the lock it will enter the critical section while other process will wait for the lock to be released by p1 so once the process p1 has executed in the critical section and when it comes out of the critical section it releases the lock once the lock is released the other processes which were waiting can now compete among themselves to acquire the lock so a new process will be given the chance to acquire the lock so that is how the lock are used in the solution to the critical section problem we can understand this using one more example real life example we can consider there are multiple faculty or multiple teachers competing for a class now one of the faculty is able to enter the class so once he enters the class he locks the door so once the door is locked other faculty members cannot enter the classroom so that is how acquiring the lock by a process is similar to locking the door of the classroom by the faculty who managed to enter the classroom so once the class has been taken for the duration of the time then the faculty will unlock the door or the faculty will release the door this is similar to the process releasing the lock so now the faculty members who were waiting outside the class can now compete among themselves to acquire the lock that is among them one of them will go inside the class and again follow the same process by locking the door so other process won't be able to enter so this is similar to the solution to critical section problem using locks so many system provide hardware support for critical section code modern machines provide special atomic hardware instruction so we'll see today two hardware instruction one is test and set that is test memory and set the value so here we will test the value of the lock variable and set the value that is one atomic instruction and the second atomic instruction is swap the contents of two memory words now the two instructions are atomic means when they are executing or a process is executing any one of these instruction other instruction cannot interrupt in between that is it is non interruptible so to understand more about this let us look at one example so we are looking at the test and set instruction so this is the hardware based solution to the critical section problem now if you see the test and set function has a boolean variable target so it will read an address take the value from the address the boolean value and store in target that value is passed to the variable rv the target value it will be changed to true true value and whatever it has been saved in the previous line will be returned now if we look at this particular example we see that there are two process process 1 and process 2 both of them are executing this particular code initially the lock the lock variable is set to false the log variable is stored in address 1000 and is set to false and both process 1 and process 2 is executing test and set operation and this is atomic as the operation is atomic only one of them will be allowed to execute the 
instruction not both so both the process wants to execute this instruction but there will be only one process that will be allowed to enter so as for an example let us assume that process 1 process 1 executes the test and lock instruction as the value or the initial value of the lock variable is false so it will test while test and lock ampersand lock so address of lock so address of lock is 1000 it will pass the address of lock to this variable target so target will read whatever is at this location 1000 so we see that the value of target is false which is the initial value so process 1 checks that the value is false so process 1 will enter the critical section now process 1 what it does it change the value of target to true initially the value was false it changed the value of target to true now the log variable contains the value true initially it was false now it contains or it is changed to true now once it has been changed to true process 2 checks the value of the log variable using test and set instruction and it sees the value is true so process 2 will go in an infinite loop or it will do nothing or we can also say it will be busy waiting so process 2 cannot enter the critical section because the log value is set to true so log value is changed from false to true so process 2 is waiting busy waiting while process 1 is inside the critical section so this also satisfy the condition of mutual exclusion where we understand that only one process will be allowed to enter the critical section so here process 1 reads the value which was initially false change it to true and enters the critical section in the critical section it executes the code and when process 1 comes out of the critical section it's change the log variable to false so from true then it is again changed to false so once it has been changed to false now process 2 which was initially not able to enter or that was busy waiting now sees that the log value is false now process 2 can enter the critical section so that is how two processes both compete but being the operation atomic only one of them will be executing this one so when the process is executing this one it changes the log value from false to true so other processes are not able to enter thus satisfying the mutual exclusion let us look at the second operation which is swap so there are two boolean variables a and b and if you see the values are being swapped a value is given to b and b value is given to a so that is the swap operation and again this operation is atomic that is if two processes or multiple processes are trying to execute this all of them will not be able to execute it simultaneously only one process at a time will be able to execute and while the process is executing this set of instruction other process has to wait they cannot interrupt so if we look at this particular example we see that there is a log variable which is initialized to false so we see that in the address 1000 the log variable which is initialized to false so this is the global variable each of the process in this example process 1 and process 2 have their own key which is a local variable so process 1 the local variable key is set to true and process 2 the local variable key is also set to true and they are stored in address 2000 and 3000 respectively now this particular code is executed by both the processes so initially the key is true for process 1 and process 2 both of them both the process process 1 and process 2 the key value is true now if the key value is true for both of them this particular statement will be executed 
Now again we have seen that this particular operation is atomic. That means only one of them will be able to execute the operation. So we assume that process 1 is able to execute. So when process 1 is executing this, it is passing the address of lock and address of key. So process 1 the address of lock is 1000 and address of key is 2000. So 1000 and 2000 is passed to this particular instruction. Now because the key value is true, it is repeated in this particular line only. Now the swap variable what it will do, it will swap the value of lock and key. So lock value is false and key value is true for process 1. So it will interchange the values. So we see that it is changed from false to true and it is changed from true to false. So once the values are changed, key value becomes false. So as false is not equal to true, process 1 is able to enter the critical section. I will repeat, once the swapping is done, the key value is false. If you see here, the key value is false. So once the key value is false, process 1 able to enter the critical section because this condition is false. So it enters the critical section. Now process 1 is not executing the swap instruction. So process 2 can execute the swap instruction. Now process 2 passes the address of the lock which is 1000 and the address of the key which is 3000. So 1000 and 3000 is passed. Accordingly the value is true and true. As the value is true for both the cases, even after interchanging, swapping, the value remains true only. So true, so the condition for process 2 is true is equal to true. So the condition is true. So process 2 waits in this particular section also all goes in an infinite loop. Whereas process 1 which entered the critical section executes the code and when it comes out it changes the log variable to false. So process 1 when it comes out it changes the log variable from true to false. Now process 2 which was in this particular section busy waiting. So process 2 sees the value of log variable change to false at this particular line by the process 1. So process 2 sees that false is not equal to true. So it goes to the critical section and executes the code in the critical section. So we see that this particular swap operation also satisfy mutual exclusion. When, when one process is inside the critical section, it changes the log value from false to true. So the other process cannot enter. Similarly, when the process comes out of the critical section, it again changes back it to false. So a new process which wish to enter now can enter. So only one process at a time is allowed to enter in the critical section. So we have seen the two solution, one using test and set and another one using swap. So both the operations are atomic and they satisfy mutual exclusion. However, they do not satisf satisfy bounded weighting. That's all for now.